Tonight, we have a generation-spanning, community-spanning gathering, and that's what I had in mind when we established the Presidential Speaker Series. This week, communities nationwide are remembering the Holocaust during National Days of Remembrance. Tonight, we have with us a human rights hero who's worked passionately and tirelessly to ensure that those lost in the Holocaust, including members of my family, are not forgotten. Now it's time for us to welcome our distinguished speaker. He's returning to campus after 24 years exactly. He was here 24 years ago on April 11th. When the Nobel Committee awarded the Peace Prize to Elie Wiesel, its members called him a messenger to mankind, one who delivered a powerful message of peace, atonement, and human dignity. It's my great pleasure to introduce the internationally renowned humanitarian who literally and figuratively has traveled a long way to share his timeless message with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Elie Wiesel. His message obviously is, first of all, to somewhat be on guard for individuals who can, you know, create horrific situations. It is, however, also, I'm sure, and to a large extent also, that one can emerge out of this, hopefully learning some lessons and passing them on. You know, he's, he's always been, um, you know, a, a, an idol of mine, a, a role model. And as a young Jewish American, you know, I, I became very, very familiar with his writing. Uh, and so to have him here at Kent State, uh, while, while right before I graduate, to have him here speaking at Kent State is something that is just truly remarkable. If you've read his book, Night, it stays with you. It's only 120 pages translated to English, but it stays with people. And I really got that feeling talking to people before the event tonight that people who read this book even 20 years ago still wanted to meet him because the story resonated and they wanted to hear him touch a little more on not only the experience, but how he endured after that. I'm of course so inspired by his commitment to hope and also the subtlety with which he frames that and how he described hope as being when he was in the camps the next piece of bread and helping people to you know make the connection um, around like what hope can mean for them but what it also means for so many people out there in the world. I think the strongest message came on his final words when I asked him someday that we we will lose all of the Holocaust survivors and those that know the story second and third hand will be the ones that have to tell it so how should we do that? And he said, if you've heard a story from a witness to history, you become a witness yourself. 